Hello, I am back in the thrift quarters. Some big news for me, yesterday I got an email notifying me in three terse sentences that I have been fired from my side gig that I had. I had a little writing gig for a weekly paper um, that was bringing in 400 bucks a month. Now that's gone. So now I am truly 100% full-time a reseller with uh, no other sources of income. So I woke up this morning um, and hit the thrifts very hard, very, very hard. And I've been focusing on filling out my store on the top end. It's a little bit bottom heavy right now where it's all those kind of quick flip, low cash items that I endorse. Um, and I, I, I've been thinking, that uh, it really, it needs to be both ends. It needs to be that, and it needs to be higher end stuff as well, as per Thrift Fever. Um, and that was that was my first instinct when I got that news, was that was, that was the stuff that I went for first, which is interesting. Um, so that's, that's the strategy moving forward, is, is looking for both, doing both. Um, I will also say, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, tax your patience too much. I know that my, my personal, the trials and travails of my personal life are not relevant to you as a reseller and, and you're trying to get information out of this video. I want to say, I'm telling you this for a reason, which is if you struggle with motivation to resell and to get up in the morning and do it consistently, um, try spite, try spite and anger and pride. Um, and I'm not joking. That sounds like I'm being glib. I'm not. I'm a full-time reseller because I am so deeply sick of having jobs and being treated like this by my employers and um, being in their pocket and uh, being rented like an asset and then disposed of. And uh, that resentment and anger fuels my reselling business, I would say that is at least half of, of kind of the emotional ballast that uh, keeps the good ship mat afloat in reselling. Um, <laughs> with, that, with that cheery preface, let me show you what I got. I, I've thrifted for probably at least seven hours today. This is a great brand, Cinch. I've mostly bought their um, shirts. That's the tag right there. It's a hoodie, like new condition. Big logo on the back, this was 10 bucks. Um, I had someone ask me um, if I would include more of what I anticipate getting for these items and I'll, I'll try to do that, but the way that I price um, is I, I do research, in-depth research on the items when I actually list them on eBay. I go into the solds and the actives and I calculate out um, a price that way. So if I were to tell you how much I anticipate making off of these, it would be slightly untruthful or it would be a lot of guesswork. So I'll kind of ballpark it, but it is a ballpark. So since these were selling for like, I think 40 or $50. The sell through on Cinch is very high. Rick, if you're watching, this one's for you. Canali, this was in uh, his last uh, thrift haul video. This is a, I believe it was a three button. Yep, that's a three button. Um, what is it here? Is it single bent? Is it double vent? Is it unvented? It looks like it's unvented. It is a... I don't know if that means anything. Don't know if that's important. Made in Italy. And it's a size... Um, something. I don't think this is sized. 52. I think that's European. I think it's a 42R. 
It says 50, yeah. I think that's a European 52. I think this is a 42R. Black. Um, again, don't know how much I'm going to sell it for. I'm, the way that I'm doing these, these bigger dollar items is I'm going to go into the solds, search highest to lowest, and then just go for it. I got a bunch of longer tail, higher dollar stuff. If I price everything up above 100 bucks, if I sell even one of them, it'll cover the cost of the rest of them. That's my scheme. There's another. Hickey Freeman for Nordstrom. I don't know if the Nordstrom line is worth less or more. This was also $10. Nope. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. <laughs> it's 10 bucks from a Goodwill. This is like a pinstripe suit jacket. I am under the impression that pinstripe suit separates don't sell that well because you have, they, you can't really like wear them as a sport coat. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. This is from the first Goodwill that I went to. I uh, took a shot on this one. Indigo by Lucky Brand. I'm hoping that this is a custom hand-dyed garment. It's a jean jacket that is a women's size, but the buttons are on the left placket. So I'm thinking it's just the small dude's size. I couldn't find anything on eBay. And of course my phone is still super slow. So I couldn't really look it up on Safari, but it's new with tags. It does have a hole here on the sleeve, but, um, the indigo thing, so um, in the world of denim, jeans and stuff, hand dyed jean, like denim garments that are hand dyed with actual indigo are worth crazy money. It's big in Japan. It's the really, really high end stuff that tends to be worth like hundreds of dollars. I'm guessing because this is lucky, even if this is hand dyed indigo, um, it's not going to be worth that much, but I'm hoping this is a hundred plus. We'll see. Um, it was only 10 bucks. So worst case scenario, I flip it for 30 or 40. I still make, you know, my standard margin of two X, three X money. It's another uh, quick flipper, not crazy money. This is a men's Lululemon t-shirt. The men's Lululemon stuff, I've said it before, if you can find it, get it. As long as it's in good condition and the price isn't crazy, this was eight bucks, which is a little more than normal. But the sell-through is 2X across the board for men's Lululemon stuff, so it's always worth picking up. I had this in my car from a previous um, haul. I don't know why it left the bag, but this is a PC game. I don't remember what the numbers on this were, but this was like a, I think it will sell for like 20 bucks or something. This is another higher dollar item. This is like a little women's purse. It's good. Um, it's really important to develop a tactile feel for certain materials. Lululemon material, really, really crucial that you learn how that stuff feels. And there is an example of that later in this vid. Also leather, leather stuff. It's really important to learn the difference between certainly fake leather and real leather and high quality real leather and cheap real leather. And you can even kind of tell, you can feel the difference between vintage leather and more contemporary leather. And even like, I think you can, you can kind of tell the difference between animals as well. Like if you find um, like lambskin stuff, it feels different. So this is really high quality leather. This came out on a goodie cart and uh, it was right in front of this other reseller who mainly, it, I only ever see her getting really vicious over purses. And this was uh, snatched from beneath her nose. So how about them apples? This is the brand. I don't know this brand, but I looked it up. The comps are all in like 100 to $200 range. Got it for 10 bucks. Another quick flipper. I am just like very lucky with these pineapple shirts. 
bonobos pineapple shirts, men's button down shirts, button up shirts. Um, this is a button down. Have 100% sell through to this, four for four, four active, four sold. And I, if you've watched one of my old, old videos, I got a very similar shirt flipped within, I think it was 24, 48 hours, six bucks. Not crazy profit on that. Probably flip it for 20. It's gonna be a long haul. I got a ton of stuff. All right. So what I was saying about Lululemon, I've preached this before, preach it again. If you have to grapple at new clothing racks in the way that I do, um, it's very, very competitive, very fast. You have to browse really, really fast. Lululemon stuff, you almost never see the logo. You will feel the fabric before you see the logo. So it is very, I have made a ton of money off of the tactile memory of Lululemon fabric because you feel it, you grab it, you look later. And at this point, I'm like 10 for 10. It's always Lululemon. This is a good example. I mean, you see this on a rack, on a hanger. Nothing about this says Lululemon visually. This just looks like any old sweater. Look how dark the actual logo is. It's all the way down here. There's no way you're gonna see this when you're flipping through at 100 miles an hour. In fact, that's what I saw. So Lululemon stuff, I'll, I'll show you on this. Lululemon pieces tend to have these really, really long tags that must be very irritating to wear. I don't wear Lululemon stuff typically, so I don't know, but they're always cut off. More often than not, they'll look like this. People will have removed them. So you're not gonna see the tag. You're just gonna feel the fabric. It's this heavy, stretchy fabric. It's just really conspicuously Lululemon. Don't know how much I'll get for this. Of course it's not sized, so that has to be disclosed. That slows down the selling. It's, it really annoys me. You can almost never find the sizes on these Lululemon pieces. Um, so this is, I actually had already checked out at this Goodwill and they wheeled a cart out as I was checking out. That was the second time that happened to me today and I circled back around and I looked through the cart, uh, the rack after I had already bought all my stuff and I found these next two pieces. Always, always give that situation the benefit of the doubt. Always go to the one extra thrift store, always check the other rack, always put in that little five, 10% of extra effort because you'll be rewarded for it more often than not. This is a, an unfamiliar thing to me. This is the brand. It's like a nautical thing. It had this big weird tag with a poem on it. I looked these up. Uh, they're selling for like 40, 50 bucks. Got it for $2. And then, and then, I found this. Anytime you find a shirt that looks like this, vintage band tees, grab them, look them up. You see these crumpled tags like this, or they're just really faded, or they're a band that you recognize. This is a metal band. This is from the 90s. It does have, where was it? It has a hole in the armpit but with these vintage pieces, especially vintage band tees, punk and metal tees and rock tees, doesn't really matter. I don't think at least, I could be wrong about that, but it's part of the aesthetic a little bit. These are flipping for over a hundred dollars. And I got it for two bucks. Always check. Um, I've talked about this one before, not this brand, but this, this phenomenon. Sometimes you'll find a big stockpile of a brand that potentially has really, really high sell through rate. And you have to make an executive decision about whether you're going to pony up the money for all of it. This happened recently. Uh, I think yesterday or the day before I bought a bunch. Of, I, I haven't listed it yet. Um, here's the brand I'm rambling. Here is the brand. Absolutely no familiarity at all. If you see weird sizes like this, this can be a giveaway that it might be something that's worth more money. This is this is the line. And then this, this is the brand down here. 
And I saw this and I thought, because you see this all the time, there's really cheap um, Korean and, um, it's mostly Korean, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese clothing brands that you just, you look it up and it's zero, zero. And I find that stuff all the time. And I thought that's what this was. And I flipped through, actually passed by it, and I flipped through a few more shirts. I found, you know, two or three more of the same brand. So I looked it up, and uh, not crazy high sell through on this brand, but some of it sells for, again, over 100 bucks. Just a basic button down. This is for a tiny man. I am a tiny man, so worst case scenario, I think it'll probably fit me really well if it doesn't sell, but I got this for seven bucks. Um, I'm gonna list it high, see what happens. I've had good luck doing this from this particular thrift store before. I think it's probably the same guy that donates these really, really small shirts. I got three or four Jimmy Ow, uh, AU shirts, and I put them up, and I didn't even lot them together, but this buyer in Europe spotted all of them and made me an offer of like 200 bucks for, for all three shirts, and they flipped right away. So I'm hoping that lightning will strike twice. Same brand, same brand here. This has a little bit more of a bizarre design. I'm not gonna lot these up. I'm gonna let them sit individually. I don't like lotting. That's just personal preference. I don't even have a rationale for that. I just don't like doing it. Same brand. And one more. One more. I haven't tried these on. Hopefully they fit. Well, hopefully they sell and they don't have to fit. This is kind of a perfect item. This brand, when I looked it up, had um, two X sell through, meaning twice as many sold as actives, and they were selling for a lot of money. This is like a hoodie, denim, jacket. And this on the back. I think I paid up for this. What was it? 15, I paid 15 bucks. Another one I'm gonna try to list for 100. This brand was in a previous video. It's one of the longer winded ones. <laughs> I understand if you didn't watch it. This is a brand um, that is that I just learned about when I started doing the quick flipping, quick flipping stuff. This is 2X sell through, Sans Soleil. I got an all white one that flipped after about two and a half weeks for 25, 30 bucks. That was seven, should be the same story. Another bread and butter. Columbia, I typically don't buy, uh, with exceptions. PFG stuff is a big exception. That's pro fishing gear. These vented fishing shirts, 100% uh, sell through on these, or close to it. And a lot of them sell, so that should be a quick flip. And this is a rarity for me. A new goodie cart came out and there was a plastic basket that was just full of video games. So I just doink, grabbed it, uh, got three games. Can't test this one, but this is the most valuable. This is worth around 40. This one is 15, 20. Also 15, 20, I think. And I do have a Wii, so I can test those too. One more bag. Check it out. Our old friend. Old friend Hickey. This is a three button. I think it's a 44L, memory serves. Um, so it's, uh, let's see, it's a suit jacket. Uh, 42L, 42 long. So it's three button, single vent. Doink. And oh, would you look at that? <laughs> so I got, I think it's three, three Hickey Freeman suit jackets, or was it four? Is there a fourth one? A lot of them. I got a lot of them. This is a pinstripe. I don't know. Do I need to be cautious about pinstripe versus uh, solid collar? I don't know. We'll find out. Single vent. 
The size is 42 long. Both of these were half off, so I got um, both of those for five bucks each. This one was also half off. This is a suit. Here's the pants, more pinstripes, here's the jacket, and here is the brand. Hugo Boss for Saks Fifth Avenue. This was $20, 20 bucks, half off. So 10 bucks, it's a two button, single vent, modern, Hugo Boss suit with no flaws, made in the USA. Don't know if that's uh, unusual or not. I think I've sold, I sold one suit ever. It's a Xenia suit and it was forever ago. Full suit, I don't even know how I'm gonna photograph it. Cause I just do hangers. Again, I don't know what I'll whisk that out. Maybe 150, 100. Last item, another Columbia shirt, the Columbia um, PFG XL. Didn't bother to run these numbers. This is the PFG um, logo. This is a desirable color too. This will probably go to a fly fisher man. It's a male XL. They like these pastel yellows and pinks and blues and stuff. Um, Cause that means you're a good fisherman if you were Columbia PFG stuff. God, I'm tired. I'm tired. All right, that's my stuff. Thank you for watching.